Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question, maximum depth of a binary tree. All right, so this question is pretty simple. Uh, we're going to be given the root of a binary tree and we want to return whatever its maximum depth is. So a binary tree's maximum depth is the number of nodes along the longest path from the root node down to the farthest leaf node. So in this case, uh, our root node is three. And what is the longest path from the root node down to one of the children nodes, right? Or leaf nodes. So in this case, the longest path is from three to seven or three to 15. So over there, you would go uh, three steps, right? So one, two, and three, okay? One, two, three. So that's a height of three. So there's two different approaches you can take to solve this question. You can take a breadth first uh, search approach where you're kind of going horizontally uh, line by line or you could take a depth for a search approach where you're recursively searching all of the paths, right? So you're going from uh, the top all the way down to the bottom, okay? So those are the two approaches. And what I'm gonna do is I'll first explain the breadth first search method because I think that's a lot easier to understand. And then I'll do the depth first search uh, approach, okay? So let's start off with a, a BFS and see how that looks like. Okay, so over here, we have a binary tree. Uh, it doesn't really have anything inside of it because we don't really care about that, right? So how exactly are we going to find the depth of this? And before we do that, let's just find it out, right? So the depth would be the maximum path from the root to a leaf. So it would be one, two, three, and four, okay? So our answer should ideally be four, or you could go over here, right? So either of them work. So in a uh, breadth first search, how it's gonna work is this is how we're gonna do, right? So first we're gonna get everything at this level. So in other words, a level order traversal. So this would be level one. This over here will be level two. This over here will be level three. This would be level four. And we're gonna keep doing that until we reach the ending. And in this case, level four is the ending. So that's where we're gonna kind of stop our BFS, okay? So let's see how we can do this, okay? So we're gonna start off with a depth uh, of zero and we're going to have a Q, okay? So our Q over here, uh, in the beginning, it's going to have the root node, which in this case, uh, let's just call it one, okay? Uh, let me just give them names, okay? So let's just call this five, six, and seven, okay? Uh, the values don't mean anything. Just think of them as a pointer to the specific node. So first we have the root node over here. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna iterate through everything in our queue and we're gonna pop everything out. And while we're popping them out, we're gonna pass its children inside of the queue. So we're gonna pop out one and we're gonna pass its children in the queue. So now we're gonna have five and two, and one is going to get popped out. So each time we're popping everything out inside of our queue, our depth increases as by one. So now our depth is one. So uh, you can kind of see what's happening. So now we have five and two. So now what's going to happen is we're going to pop out five and we're going to add its children. So it has only one child, which is six. So let's add six. And now we're going to go to two and we're going to remove a uh, pop it out and add its children. So seven and three. So seven and three. All right, so uh, now that we popped our five and two, we're gonna increase our depth by one, making it two. So I'm pretty sure you can understand what's happening. In the beginning, we had one, then we had five and two, then now we have six, seven, and three, and we're gonna keep doing that until our queue becomes empty, because at that point, we know that we have reached an ending. All right, so that's pretty simple to implement, and let's just see how we can do it real quickly. Okay, so let's start off by having a, res a, a variable called depth. And depth is going to be what we end up outputting. So over here, we're going to define our queue. You could use the queue from collections.dq, or in this case, I'm just going to end up using a list. And after that, to our queue, we're going to append the root node, okay? So over here, the first thing, we're going to go inside of a while loop, and it's going to be while queue. So what that means is we're going to keep going inside of this loop until our queue is empty, all right? So over here, what's going to happen is our depth is going to increase by one. So plus equal one. And now what we want to basically do is we want to pop out everything inside of our queue. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to have a temporary variable over here. And this temporary variable over here is going to store out. So whatever we pop out, we're going to add its children to the temporary uh, list over here. And after popping everything out and adding its children, we're going to make the queue equal to this, okay? So let's see how we can do that. So to do that, we'll just do for node uh inside of our queue so now we get each of the nodes and over here we're going to check if it has a left node so if node dot left so that means a left node does exist and in that case we're going to append that to our queue actually sorry we're going to be appending that to our temporary node 
So temp dot append and we're gonna do q uh, sorry node dot left okay. So uh, we added the left child currently and now we're gonna check if it has a right child okay. So if node dot right and if it does exist then in that case to our temporary list over there we're gonna append node dot right. All right, perfect. So now at the ending of this, uh, we would have popped out everything from our queue. And now we need to redefine our queue. So our queue is now going to be equal to whatever the temporary list is, which is nothing else but the children values. Okay. So each time we're going to be doing this and each time uh, our depth is going to increase by one. So at the very ending, all we need to end up doing is we want to return our depth value. So let's submit this. And yeah. Okay, so actually before we do this, we actually need to uh, keep track or check for one condition, which is in the condition where uh, our root does not have a value, okay? So in that case, we'll, we'll just do that in the very beginning. So if not root, then in uh, that case, we're directly just going to end up returning zero, and this should take care of the error that we're getting. Okay, and as you can see, our submission was accepted. And now let's look at the other approach, which is the depth first search approach. Okay, so in a depth first search approach, what we're gonna do is we're gonna travel through all of the paths. So what we're gonna do is, for example, we're first gonna go to the path where we go all the way to the leftmost node, okay? So we would end up over here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and each time we're coming back, we're so currently over here, we'll have a depth of zero. Then now we're going to go up a node and now we're going to have a depth of one, right? We'll be over here. Then we go up again and we would have a depth of two. And at the very ending, we're going to add one to that, okay? And that's kind of how we're going to find out the length, okay? So let's just look at another example. Uh, we would go to the right. So let's just say we go to the rightmost value, right? So we would go here, then we would go back here. And then each time we're going to be increasing the depth by one. But what you want to understand is that we're going to be going through each of our nodes over here, okay? So it is a recursive solution, and uh, I think it's easier to understand uh, when I kind of write the code for it. So let's just see how that looks like as well. Okay, so now let's do our recursive or our depth first search approach, okay? So over here, we're gonna have two calls, right? So we're gonna have a left call, so this refers to the left height, and the left height over here, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna recursively call uh, so max dot depth, uh, sorry, self dot max depth. That's the function over here. And each time we're going to be calling on the left child. Okay. So root dot left. Okay. And another thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, but for the right. Okay. So I'll just copy this over. And instead of giving the left child as the root over here, we're going to give the right child. So root dot right. Okay. So each time we're going to be going to uh, left and to the right. Okay but there has to be some sort of stopping condition. So the stopping condition that we have over here is if not root, then in that case, we're just directly going to return zero. So this works in two ways because let's say in the very beginning, we just have an empty tree. We're just gonna end up returning zero and we're done. Or in this case, if we go to one of the children, we're going to end up returning zero, okay? So now you need to understand that once we go to one of the children nodes, so let's say we go over here, we now have a value of zero. So what we're going to be doing over here is we're going to be checking if the left is greater than our right. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to return the left plus one. Okay. So in the very beginning, you can kind of think of this as being zero plus one, giving us a value of one. Okay. And if that's not the case, or if a left is equal to right or any other case, then in that case, we're just going to return our right value plus one. Okay. And that should be it for our solution. So obviously you could do all of these uh, in a single line, but I just did it this way. So it's kind of a little bit more easier to understand. So let's submit this and let's see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, our submission was accepted. So the time complexity for this in both of our approaches is going to be big O of n. So in our breadth first search, we are going to be going through all of our nodes. And even in for the depth first search, we are going to be looking at all of the possible paths. So in both the cases, our time complexity is big O of n, where we go through each and single, each and every one of the nodes. And one last thing I do want to mention is that in the month of December, so the December Leco challenge, I won't be making videos as consistently, but maybe I'll do like three or four videos a week, but I won't be able to do it every single day. Okay. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys. And do let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.